Hey guys, welcome back to or welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Chayan Alton and if you have, thank you so much for watching my videos and supporting me. You guys have no idea how much it means to me. You're really helping my dreams come true. And yes, I am a day late for uploading. Um, I'm filming this on Sunday instead of on a Friday night like I would normally do. And because I've been dealing with some um, personal things, um, family things, um, Canberra police are fucking useless and yeah so this week I just wanted to do something very chill instead of a very dark um, true crime video don't get me wrong I love them but sometimes I need a break because they can be very dark and emotional and this week I decided to stay within the realm of true crime and show you guys my true crime book collection and yeah, if you like any of these books, I would definitely have them linked down below so you can purchase them if you want them. And yeah, let's get into it. So, as you guys can see, this is my true crime book collection. It's quite a lot of books. Um, the reason why they're all up there is because I have no room on any of my other bookshelves and that collection will most likely be only getting bigger as I do more cases, but yeah, that is where it is right now. Of course, my mum put lots of of her puppy in the office, but yeah. Currently, there are 23 books here, and I will be showing each of them. I have two Titanic books because I do consider them to be true crime, or well, depends on how you see the thinking of the Titanic. I do consider it to be true crime and conspiracy, but yeah, there are 23 books here so far. I will be going through these books four or five at a time and let's get started. So the first two books I'll be talking about are Clues from the Beyond, True Crime Story from a Real Life Psychic Detective, Debbie Malone. So this is actually a really good book, it's really interesting. Um, they talk about how they bring this kind of stuff into true crime and into the investigation. It talks about how many cases, um, Australian ones that is, where cases were solved because of psychic detectives. And it is really interesting. It's a pretty good side book. I'm pretty sure I got this from Big W, I want to say. And yeah, so basically the headline at the back is The Dead Do Talk, which they do. <clears throat> and it says, Clue from the Beyond explored the truth about some intense real-life Australian crime through the eyes of a psychic medium as she investigates criminal cases and unsolved murders. Debbie Malone is an acclaimed spirit medium who has assisted police departments across Australia in missing persons and murder investigations in over two decades. In this follow-up to her best-selling book, Never Alone, Debbie shares more personal accounts of experiences with the spirit world and the ripple effects they create when extending proof that life and love still go on across the veil. Some stories are heartwarming and some chilling, but all will captivate you and awaken your curiosity as you explore the truth about life and love through the eyes of those in spirit. So it is a really good book, I definitely do recommend this. And then, of course, I had to, because I remember watching videos when the Golden State Killer was finally found and identified as um, Joseph James D'Angelo, I'm pretty sure his name is. If I look. But yeah, um, it's about the Golden State Killer, and I got the book by Michelle McNamara called I'll Be Gone in the Dark, and it is such a good book. They do have the Audible, um, version of it, and you can get that. Um, and it really does show you what it must have been like for victims at the time and trying to tell their story and Michelle McNamara she passed away while writing this book she was obsessed with the Golden State Killer and she got a book deal for this when she wrote an article about the case a couple of years before starting this book and the article really just blew the door wide open and made, made the case um, of the Golden State Killer really popular again and made people want to find him because his crimes went back to the 70s and 80s and over time cases are forgotten about. So it is a really interesting thing and before he was named the Golden State Killer he was known as the Visalia Ransacker, the East Area Rapist and the original Night Stalker. Michelle McNamara was the one who gave him the name of the 
uh, the Golden Fate Killer. So yeah, I definitely do recommend getting this book. It is really interesting and yeah, like I said, it's now an HBO documentary series and they do have the audible of this book. The next book I have is James Patterson, Murder Thy Neighbour. Um, talking true crime cases and it is a really good book. Um, there's two stories within this and they do have some element of fiction in them based on dialogue and stuff but the majority of these two stories are completely true. They're about real people and real crimes and the consequences for those crimes. And if you're in the true crime community or in the chilling book community, you probably know the name Jay Patterson. He has sold so many different books, specifically in the crime genre. Not always real, Some, a lot of them are fiction, but he is an amazing author. So I do highly recommend this book. The next one is The Old Man and the Gun and Other Tales of True Crime and it's now a major film. It was written by David Gran and he's also the Sunday Times bestseller of Killers of the Flower Moon. Um, it's a really short book but it looks very simple and it, would, it is a really interesting one. Um, it is about quite a lot of different crimes and it is really interesting and as it described on the back, horrifying, hilarious, and outlandish. Well, what do you expect here? But yeah, I definitely recommend this as well. I'm pretty sure I got this one from BW. And then, as I mentioned, I do have some Titanic books in here because, like I said, it depends on how you look at the thinking of the Titanic. If you didn't, if you consider it just a horrific. Um, world event or if you would consider it a true crime slash conspiracy. I personally view it as true crime slash conspiracy. But yeah, I got this book ages ago when I was really young. I used to be obsessed with the Titanic back in year three, um, year four. And I got this book from a pop-up shop, I think, uh, at the local shopping centre. And I fell in love with the gold foiling and the cover. And it's called Wreck and Thinking of the Titanic, the Ocean's Greatest Disaster, Marshall Everett. And it is a really interesting book, um, and it looks beautiful. I love the colour. And it has on the back the little white star line logo. But it also says, A graphic and thrilling account of the thinking of the greatest floating pallet ever built, carrying down to watery graves more than 1,500 1, souls. So yeah, it is a really good book and I love it. I've read it so many times because I do have my first where I get obsessed with the Titanic again. It's me. <laughs> if you have been watching my True Crimes of Australia series, you know that I started off with a six um, part um, installment on the Ivan Light Backpacker murder case. So if you watch that, you will recognise this book. Brother of the Sin by Mark Whittaker and Les Kennedy and like I said it's a really interesting read and it's really good like I love how it looks and it's a really big book I got this off Amazon and yeah so the way it was written is so interesting and it was also the inspiration for Catch from the Lot and it does shed some light onto the case and on Ivan Malat specifically. So yeah, I highly recommend that. Then I have Cult Uncovered True Crimes or True Stories of Mind Control and Murder by Emily J. Thompson. And it's really interesting. It's very similar to this book. I just think the covers look pretty interesting and so do my other so it's the next book I have. But yeah, it said Fanaticism, breeding of acts of savagery. How did Charles Manson inspire his, his family campaign of murder? What twisted ideology lay behind the wacko siege and the mass murder of Jonestown? Why did suicidal followers of Heaven's Gate believe Doomsday was nay? So yeah, it is actually really interesting. I do love the cases that it focuses on and yeah. If I have a fucking smiling lunatic, it's because my mum's walking past and being a weirdo. 
But yeah, and then, like I said, this book does look very similar to the other ones, and it is called Behind the Horror, True Crime Story that inspired horror movies, and it's written by Dr. Lee mm, Miller, I want to say. But yeah, it's really interesting, and some of these uh, cases, even this, they are so horrifying that they are horror movies, and the horror movies are so horrifying, you wouldn't think they would actually happen in real life. And this book um, has on the back, there is nothing scarier than a true story. For decades, horror movies have terrified and entertained us. For many of the darkest nightmares to haunt our screens have even darker origins. They are based on real events. Discover the horrifying murders, haunting, kidnappings and disappearances that inspired iconic horror movies. And yeah, so when you look at the, the contents of it, it covers the serial killers of Weimar, um, Germany. The, it also covers the murder of Bobby Franks, the client of Ed Glean, the client of John Christie and Neville Heath, and the Hammersmith nude murder, the possession of Roland Doe, the Jersey Shore shark attacks, the sinking of the USS Indian, Indianapolis, and the life of Frank Mundus. It also covers a very iconic movie, a US one that is called The Town That Judged Sundown, which is about the Texarkana um, Phantom Murders. Then they have the Amityville Horror, which a lot of people know that about that. The Poltergeist, which is the Seaford Poltergeist. Nightmare on Elm Street, which does focus on sudden, unexplained, nocturnal death syndrome. And then the Serpent and the Rainbow, which is the strange tale of Clevis um, Narciss. Then Silence of the Lamb, which was inspired by Ted Bundy, the Green River Killer, Gary Hadnick, Ed Temper, um, Jerry Brutus, Dr. Alfred Bailey Trevino, Andre Chico Taylor, and the Monster of Florence. Then you have Scream, which is inspired by the movie The Murder of Janet Crixman and the Crimes of the Gainfield Ripper. Then you have The Mothman, obviously. Wolf Creek, which was inspired by Ivan Millar and the murder, of, the murder of Peter Falcino. Then you have The Conjuring, Annabelle and Conjuring 2, which is all based on the Enfield Poltergeist, the Parion Farm, and the case of the Annabelle doll. Then you have The Salem with Trials and the Small Lighthouse Tragedy. So it has a lot in this book and it is really interesting. I do love it. I have read it multiple times. Um, and yeah, this next one you will recognize from previous um, True Crimes of Australia episodes or videos because it is Malat inside Australia's biggest manhunt, which was written by a head detective on the case, Clive Small and Tom Gilling. It is really interesting, the writing is so good, it's so captivating, and it has so much information that you might not find online about the case. And it does cover Malat, the Backpackers, and the Belangelo State Forest. And it is really interesting, and it did cover um, a discovery in 2010 of another body, which a lot of people did believe would be with another Backpacker victim. And the body was named Angel because the shirt found at the scene. And years later, they were actually able to connect it to another case, which is the one I'm talking about next week. So keep your eyes out for that. Um, the next book I have is The Lost Girls, which is one I am currently reading, which is about a case that I'm covering next week. And I'm not going to give away too much about it, mainly because I am covering it next week. But like I said, all the links for all these books will be down below. Um, hopefully I can find the one for the really pretty Titanic book. I might not be able to, hopefully I can. But yeah, it is one that I am talking about next week and it was linked to the Ivan Malat Backpacker Murders for a little while, but yeah. Look forward to that and the book is really pretty. It is written by Ava Benning Morrison, so like I said, this will be linked down below. The next one is one of my absolute favourites and one that I highly recommend to anyone um, if they're a true crime lover or a true crime um, content creator. Um, and it is I Catch Killer, The Life and Many Deaths of a Homicide homicide Detective, Gary Jubilin uh, with Dan Fox. 
and it is really good. I absolutely love it. I read it all the time and um, the author of this book actually had the podcast about what he talked about. And his true crime podcast is actually called I Catch Killers with um, Gary Jubilin, True Crime Australia. And it is really interesting. There's a little logo for it. I absolutely love it. And yeah, it's about serial killing, child abductions, organised crime hits and domestic murders. This is, a, this is the memoir of a homicide detective. I Catch Killers is what I do with who I am. And it is really interesting, it goes into Gary's life and also what he's done in his job. And yeah, I absolutely love it, I highly recommend it to anyone. And it is a good snapshot into what a lot of these homicide detectives deal with. And it is really interesting some of the processes they have to go through to actually catch the person responsible for crime. And then I had Blood on the Rosary, which I did see a big W one day and I went, that looks like something interesting, something that I might potentially cover. And yeah, so the book is really good. I've only read a couple pages of it so far. Um, I didn't want to read the full thing yet, mainly because I'm doing a lot of other cases first. But um, it said, a brave nun, her twin brother, the secrets and lies that would tear them apart. And yeah, a heartfelt, brave and inspiring memoir about the power of speaking out. Twins share a special bond, a connection that can't be put into words. Margaret Howard shared that bond with her twin brother Michael. Inseparable children, they both gave their life to the Catholic Church at age 22. Margaret becoming a nun and Michael a Salesman priest. Now the brother Margaret adorned is in jail after pleading guilty to multiple charges of child abuse and the unlikely whistleblower was Margaret, his courageous twin sister. And yeah, um, because I do want to speak out a lot about like child abuse and missing person cases that sometimes end in sex trafficking, I thought that'd be a good one to do because I actually did catch the person responsible in this case which doesn't normally always happen. Um, I have done fundraisers for Thorn and I will have that in the cards up below. But Thorn is an amazing organisation. It is founded by Aston Kutcher and Demi Moore and what they do is they create technology to fight against um, human trafficking, sex trafficking, especially in children and the sexual exploitation of children. And it is a really good organisation, it's used in multiple countries around the world and they have a technology called Spotlight which helps police departments identify missing persons and persons in sex trafficking rings as quickly as possible so that they can be reunited with their families and it helps put the people behind bars and I'm pretty sure that this technology is used in Australia as well. And so I want to keep doing birthday fundraisers for them but I thought because this is what this is about it would be interesting and it would help me in fundraising and understand more about it. So, yeah. Okay, the next book I have, um, I was partially drawn to it because of how glossy and black it is. But it is called Public Enemies and it's about Russell Mad Dog Cox, Ray Dennings and the Golden Age of um, Robbery and it was written by Mark Stappen. It's actually a pretty good looking book. I've only read a couple pages of it. Um, but it was about Australia in the 60s, 70s and 80s and when armed robberies and robbers were the top of the food chain here. And it kind of, it ties in with the gangland um, murders, which is what these next two books are about. Melbourne gangland scene was really popping off from the 60s to the early 2000s. And yeah, the next book I have about it is actually one from the, one of the gangland um, drug lord, if you might call him that, which is life sentence, my last 18 month, Carl Williams. For years, others have spoken for Carl. In these stories, Carl tells his own stories for the first time. It's like meeting the man behind the myth. And I'm pretty sure it was written by Adam Shand. And yeah, in 2007, Carl Williams was convicted of three murders and was sentenced to 35 years jail, yet his role in the Melbourne gangland ward went far beyond a handful of killings, however brutal, and had made him one of the most infamous names in Australian criminal history. The unlikely gang boss with a baby face and friendly grin 
had played a role in leading the savage, long-running conflict that saw more than 30 gang-related murders on the streets of Melbourne. But yeah, this was a very big part of Australian history and true crime history as well. And it's actually really interesting because a while ago I finally start, started watching some of the Underbelly TV series. Well, I watched one. It was in Informer 3838 and it was really fucking good and it got me into this and I was like, I want to cover that. And Informer 3838 is about Lawyer X. Um, Nicola Garbo, and I put this next book is Lawyer X, and it's all about her. And it was written by Anthony Dowsley and Patrick Craylin, and it's a scandalous story of how Melbourne gangland war was really won. And it's really interesting. Um, it's Underbelly meets Molly Game, the true crime investigation that rewrote the story of Melbourne infamous gangland war and triggered the Royal Commission. It's a really good um, story, but Lawyer X has been on the run and hidden from the public for a very long time. And yeah, so she was a criminal barrister and she turned into a police informer, which really put her life at risk and she could have been killed had one of them found out. And yeah, so she would fight, she was fighting to keep people like Carl William, the principal and all that, out of prison and she did eventually turn on them. And the next book I have, which if you saw last week's video, you know this book pretty well. It is Missing William Terrell, and it was written by Caroline Overington. Again, another amazing writer and an amazing person who I would love to meet and talk to one day. And yeah, so one minute a little boy is playing outside his foster nana's house, the next he is gone. And it detailed the last known hours of William Terrell's life and some of the suspects into his disappearance. And yeah, I thought it was really interesting and it really did help me with my videos. Um, this is where I got the majority of my information from when I was doing that video last week. The next book I have isn't really a true crime, it's more about the Second World War. And it is actually a really interesting book and it, it looks beautiful, must I say. But it's about The Last Navigator and it was written by Paul Goodwin with Gordon Goodwin. And it's from the Queensland Bush to Bomber Command and Pathfinder, true story of courage and survival against the odds. And it was really interesting, um, the wars kind of interest me in the sense of wanting to know exactly what happened, the people who ended up fighting them, and the fact that so many people were never found, they were never it recorded as death or dead or missing or came back to their family, they just went missing. Again, a lot of times they weren't able to actually say for certain someone was dead even though they most likely died on the battlefield. Um, but it is interesting putting names to faces and really everything they did is the reason we are where we are today because they kind of kept our future open for us. And another one is kind of a bit about, well it is about church crimes like all that stuff really fucking blows my mind. But it is called The Altar Boy, a powerful true story by Suzanne Smith. It's really good. Um, not what actually happened, but the book is really good. And Children with Everything to Live For. A community betrayed the whistleblower price who paid the ultimate price. And yeah, so it, it is a lot about the forensic stuff and it did take... Um, place in Newcastle and New South Wales and yeah so it was it was really interesting it's one of those things where it's an interesting way but it's also a heartbreaking thing to read about especially considering there was young children involved and yeah and again another book about the Titanic this one was actually okay so I have a hearing loss and in Year 3 and Year 4 and a little bit of Year 7, I had an amazing support teacher. He was such a nice person and I loved him. And because he knew I was really into the Titanic, I think it was either my birthday or... I'm pretty sure it was my birthday, he got me this book. And it's the riddle of the Titanic and we used to read this together and he would use this to help me with some of my support work so I could get through it. And he was 
That's an amazing person. I haven't seen him in so long. I'd love to see him again. And yeah, all my friends loved him, of course, because he was just this fun, loving, really nice, chill guy. And yeah, so I treasure this book more than anything. I mean, you can clearly see that I've read it quite a lot. And yeah, it was written by Robin Gardner and Dan Van Der Bat. Pretty sure that's how you say it. And it. The riddle of the Titanic, a decade after the, di the Titanic was located two and a half miles under the North Atlantic. Robin Gardner and Dan Van de Bat present the root and branch reassessment of one of the greatest and saddest legends of the 20th century. They show that the technological triumphs of the discovery and the exploration of the wreck have raised more problems than it solved, as well as a lot of debris. While transactively um, re-examining all the great issues raised by the most poignant disaster of modern times, the authors bring out other intriguing questions. Why would the man at the helm when she hit the iceberg packed off to South Africa? Why did her reluctant chief officer still feel uneasy about the ship which he had never sailed on before? Why did one of us steward with the ballet ship at the bottom of the ocean. It was not only the sea that covered up the Titanic. So like I said, it's really a question of do you believe it was actually just a big mistake and a great tragedy, or if you believe that it had some true crime and conspiracy um, elements like me and a lot of other people do. And this one is more like scientific, not true crime. We've got to go. Um, and it is body count, how climate change is killing us by patting Manning, and it is really good. Um, it's really sad and makes you really think about a lot of what we're doing and what we can do to help the environment more. And reading this, it kind of made me really think about what I'm doing most of the time and try to be more eco-conscious, more eco-friendly. And yeah, so it's a great read. I highly recommend you guys read this, it's really interesting, but it's also really heartbreaking because of things like the Australian bushfires, because we had Black Saturday and then we had the entire Black Summer, which was last year, and it was really heartbreaking, took a lot of lives, lively stock homes, and burnt so many thousands of hectares of land that is so heartbreaking that it could have been avoided, and most of it is our fault for not doing backburning and for not caring more about climate change and our environment and yeah the next one was one that my mom got me for Christmas and I fucking love it it is Reasonable Doubt by Dr. Nancy Mallet Lost Life, Justice Delayed, Criminals Walking Free, Exposing Australia's Worst Wrongful Conviction and basically when a jury convicts someone they have to believe that um, beyond a reasonable doubt that person did it or that is reasonable doubt and they can't fully convict that person they need to retrial with more evidence and find more evidence to convict them and it is really interesting how much um, evidence did go into this stuff and yeah that is my entire true crime book collection <laughs> fuck ton of books only gonna expand anyways i hope you guys liked this video if you do hit that like and subscribe button and comment down below what books you like and if there's any true crime books you think I would enjoy and would help me with future cases that I want to cover. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time. I love you and bye.